1998, StarCraft was released. The game allowed you to make custom game modes which people really enjoyed. And among these many fan creations, one of them was called Aeon of Strife. In this mod, you played as a hero and killed enemy minions. Minions dropped minerals when killed, which could then be used to upgrade your stats. Sounds familiar? It was not until 2003 that someone took Aeon of Strife's concept and remade it in Warcraft. The game had dedicated heroes, customizable abilities, all things that would actually make the game fun to play. This recreation would later be known as Dota. Eventually, the people that made Dota's various versions would go and create games like League of Legends, Dota 2, Heroes of New Earth, and even Strife. But let's see how Heroes came to be. You see, back in 2010, when Blizzard announced Blizzard Dota, all heroes had glowy eyes and were made of about 5 polygons. As you may expect, no one could be blinded when they could see into the 4th dimension. The game's aesthetic was somewhat chessboard-like as you can see here, and the game was very heavy and pushing, hence the siege roll. Somewhere around here, Valve and Blizzard got into a bit of a fight. Gaben wanted to make a new game with Icefrog, one of the biggest developers of Defense of the Ancients. Of course, they wanted to call the game Defense of the Ancients 2. Blizzard didn't like this. The CEO of the company, Mike Morheim, challenged Gaben to a friendly oil wrestling fight. The two went at it for 5 days and 5 nights until someone called the police. They had to call that a draw. This had an interesting result. Valve earned the rights to the word Dota but not Defense of the Ancients. So they called their game Dota 2 because that was the only thing they could call it. After that, a few years passed. Blizzard stayed silent on the whole MOBA thing, rarely throwing some comments here and there. No one actually knew when the game would be released. It was not until finally, in 2014, that Blizzard announced. Hey guys, we made a game, it's called Heroes of the Storm, try it. Okay, bye. And so it began. Back then, the talent system was basically an item shop. Generic talents occupied most of the space, with ability upgrades consisting of very boring things like deal more damage with this here stick. But let's take a look at the pinnacle of generic talents. Path of the Warrior, Path of the Assassin, and Path of the Wizard. As you can expect, each one gave respectively tankiness, attack damage, and spell power. The abundance of generic talents felt like an item shop because these talents acted like a common pool of upgrades that heroes could draw from, without taking into account what the hero actually is. Here are some examples. Brightwing and Lily could spice your drink with their venom and damage over time. Raider and Tychus had scouting drone, which was basically wards. Nazebo and Kel'thas had clairvoyance, which was an AoE reveal. There was this one funny talent called superiority that made you tankier against anything that wasn't a hero. No one really picked it. On the flip side, Minion Killer was a level 4 talent that increased your damage to non-heroes. Of course, some of these survived, like Cleanse, Boldo the Storm, Block, Rewind, and so on. But let's take a look at something that didn't survive. It is time for Artifacts. Somewhere, sometime, Artifacts were announced. They were basically a way to increase your hero's stats using gold outside the game. There were three artifact slots, gems, relics, and trinkets. Yes. Each was basically the same thing. The stats increase could range from basic things like HP to more weird things like mount speed or attack range. Content creators like Total Biscuit even made a video about it. I view it as dull and needless progression that is in there for progression's sake alone. We're gonna have advantages over each other and disadvantages before the game's even begun, whereas before, talents were great. People rage at the sight of artifacts. Every time somebody mentioned like it, someone would die. I've decided that I want to die. It was really dark times. Literally after about a week, they were thrown into the freezer where they keep StarCraft Ghost and every single project that was deemed. Okay, back to reality. Release date. 2015 game has been released. Rejoice gamers, it is time to play some video games. Heroes was met with average scores which would later move up, as more and more reviewers gave it actually a fair chance. Turns out, the game played very differently from League of Legends, who would have thought? Also, game journalists thought that Zeratul was a Nexus original. Game journalism, everybody. Around this time, there was also something else. Please give a good welcome to Talent Gating. Oh no! After adding and removing artifacts, you had to level up heroes to access all of their talents. 
As a frame of reference, you had to level a hero to level 2 to actually pick their other ultimate. This is a very bad idea. No shit, Sherlock. This was a bad idea, nobody liked it, people just complained on the forums, as you do. This was removed on release, as expected. So long, During the early days, armor also wasn't a thing. The game divided damage increases into the resistant and vulnerable status effects. Resistant gave you 25 armor, while vulnerable gave you 25% increased damage taken. Speaking of things that changed, mounts were also 40% movement speed around this time, and the game looked like this. Did you know that before release, ranked was also divided into 40 ranks? There's a lot of people that can't even count that high. For example, I only have 10 fingers and that's what I usually use. Due to the way you climbed the system, half the player base was rank 1. Very impressive, we either had the best player base or the worst rank system. They introduced the bronze to diamond system shortly after, and by shortly I mean metal 2016. Evidently ranked wasn't a focal point back then, but can you really blame them when ranked in any video game usually is more of a social experiment rather than an actual measurement of skill? Around this time, before Heroes 2.0, master skins were a thing. You want to show off your mastery with a hero, well too bad because master skins were not about skill. But get your hero to level 10 and you can buy a skin that could only be purchased with gold, 10,000 gold. The prestige was insane. Nah, not really. Usually they look like roided versions of the base skins, which was actually pretty nice. When you saw somebody with it, you knew that at least they were dedicated to the hero. Also back then, you could only buy skins with real money, something really weird nowadays. Brawls were announced, previously called Arena Mode. This mode lets you try crazy game modes that the devs baked up every week, usually more centered around 5 minute teamfights over actual balance. They were fun, people liked them, and they stayed around until 2018. There's a list of all the brawls slash arenas in the description, go check it out. I would explain all of them, but that would take around 45 minutes. Although, kudos to Pool Party for being one of the most beloved game modes in all of Heroes of the Storm. Haunted Mines is one of the first maps we've had in the game. Basically, on release, the map looked like this. Golems spawned here, you got skulls here underground, and both golems spawned once all the skulls were taken. Thing is, back then they would spawn where they died each time, so if your golem died literally next to the keep of the enemy team, it would respawn right next to the enemy keep. The games were very one-sided, the map was small, not a lot to do when you're behind. All of this made Blizzard remove the map, rework it, release it, rework it again, and stow it away forever. Of course, it is no secret that a lot of heroes got changes over the years. Time for a lightning round. Hero reworks. Tychus's old passive was an attack speed increase as he shot to mimic miniguns. Basically, the more you shoot, the more you shoot. Raynor's old trade used to reduce his cooldowns by 1 second every time a nearby enemy died. It was also increased to 10 seconds for heroes. Sounds interesting? Too bad. He was swiftly reworked into a ranged minion. Greymane had an ultimate so bad that it had to be changed. Instead of Curse Bullet, Greymane had a skill shot that applied vulnerable to the enemy. On the same vein, Sylvanas' old ultimate used to be Possession. Turns out making 3 guys simp for you every couple minutes isn't worth the hassle. It was turned into a talent that no one picked until her re-rework quite recently. People also tend to forget Lucio's reverse amp used to be his ultimate. Now he can high-five people. Impressive. Zeratul also had an ultimate that gave him attack speed and a small dash on each basic attack. It was about as useful as a square wheel. Allegedly, Kerrigan also had Sagara's Devouring Maw, meaning that she had her own combo confirm and follow-up. Plus her W was even bigger back then. A hero like Kerrigan with Devouring Maw and an AoE stun would be about as fun as running through a glass window. During the early beta, Falstad also didn't have a gust of wind. Instead, he had Aerial Blitzkrieg, an AoE explosion around him. Basically a worse hinterland blast. And another fun little oopsie by Blizzard, Nazebo used to be the only mage during the early beta. It took him about a year to release Jaina as the first real mage. Until then, your choices of mage was Naked Frogman, and that's about it. Welcome to 2017. First of all, they added armor. Wow, now you can actually have damage reduction. Tanks were happy, except not. They reworked all the tanks and every single one of them became basically niched to a specific scenario. For example, Arthas and Johanna were classified as physical tanks, while Anubarak and Tyrell were magic tanks. ETC and Muradin were two of the few tanks that were classified as generalists, but this idea didn't last long until all tanks got re-reworked into, you know, being more usable. 
Speaking of 2017, with all the reworks, it is time to rework the entire game. Welcome to Heroes 2.0. Let's see what we got. <gasps> Free skins, free heroes, free boxes, unlimited levels, unlimited progression, unlimited emojis, unlimited disappointment when you get a spray in a pack opening. Some YouTube channels tried to make hot loot box openings, but nobody cared. Still, they got the word out. Player base went up, people's opinions of hot went from eh to eh with a smiley face, and it was a good time to be a hero of the storm. Alright, back to normal speed. Blizzard showed us a fun teaser. It looked like Deathwing. Wow, it has dragon claws, there's a dragon. Just kidding, it's actually D.Va. Wait a couple years for actual Deathwing. Hanamura was released, what a pretty map. You can bribe these miniboss camps with only one stack of bribe. The big boss in the middle can bore you for your pleasure. In this version of Hanamura, you couldn't really attack the enemy's core, just like in Towers of Doom. Only the objective and catapults could do that. Why? I don't know, teehee. With Heroes 2.0, a lot of changes came to the base game. Baseline quests were added to many kits like Medivh and Muradins, together with little dings that tickle your balls a little bit every time you did good. Tickle their balls a little bit. Now you can pick up enemy globes after 5 seconds. 5 second roll. Also ammunition was removed and yes, this was post 2.0. They also blanket nerfed all supports because running two of them was meta. Oh, but they zoomed out the camera a little bit. At the end of the year, stealth was also reworked to be visible. I have no idea how we used to be able to see these things. All stealth heroes got a rework. Zeratul, Nova, Valera, Samuro all got big changes and became scarier. Booga, booga! Even if you could see them coming, it was too late. A little over 10,000 damage. The first Q wasn't even counted. A bit later, they reworked Hanamura. Now there's no more voring, somewhere sad. You also had to divide your team into attacking and defending groups. Every team got their own payload going at the same time. Now you can only have one objective at a time, and you can actually attack the enemy core. Garden of Terror was also reworked around this time, the map used to work with a day-night cycle. During the night, you had to gather seeds to empower your Garden Terror, which you could ride into battle and break towers with. The terror used to expire if you didn't control it after a couple minutes, and apparently everybody kept letting it happen. So they made the new version much easier to play. You collect one seed and the terror pushes on its own. People liked it. Simple objective, make big ape go happy. Knock knock, oh what's that? Structures no longer give XP? This is outrageous. Fuck this game. Everyone forgot about it two days later. Knock knock, hello, I'm Orphea. Hey fuck you Orphea. This game's dead. Because Orphea was released, my family was killed. Then people forgot what they were angry about. We got new maps, Praxis Holdout, Forehead Junction, then later Volskaya Foundry and Alterac Pass along the way. But wait, oh! <gasps> December 2018. EGC was officially cancelled. What a Christmas gift. Wait, 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 wait. What if we grab $3 million from this guy's $40 million paycheck and give it to Heroes of the Storm? Nah. Well, that's not good. So, less manpower. Right, fuck it, just do some reworks. What should we rework? Heroes? Nope. Gotta keep the game fresh, let's rework systems. Warriors stop being a thing, and now tanks and bruisers are here. Specialists? Special yeet. We don't need this garbage anymore. Supports are now healers, and supports are something else. Congratulations, the lost vikings are now supports. It's 2020, be yourself. Early 2019, Hero League and Team League became one. Now they're called Storm League. It's a sacred place where everybody comes to fuck and get fucked. 50% win rate, give and take. <coughs> Speaking of reworks, what if we reworked the game many times, over a long time? That's why they introduced Nexus Anomalies. Nexus Anomalies are basically a way for the game to let us beta test features that might get added to the game. Are the effects fun? Yeah, they're fun. But are they scary? Oh yeah, they're scary. Nobody wants to deal with mounted invisible garage rushing at you like a freight train full of rage and testosterone that you can't see. But the weather effect was a bit of an outlier. Both the previous anomalies were added as people got used to them. Namely, minions dropping XP globes and towers targeting hostile heroes. By the time of me making this video, they introduced a gladiator's medallion, which is basically a self-cleanse on a 300 second cooldown. They also renamed the brawl mode into ARAM mode, because ever since 2018, they haven't introduced a new brawl. 
which is fine because now it means that we have an official area mode where you can actually do your daily quests and get gold, which makes a lot of people happy. And to close it off, here's a list of all the hero reworks that happened between 2019 and 2020. Chain rework, I also, I will rework, overlap the rework, rework list rework, with this voiceover, that way it gets really chaotic and it's so kind of impossible to hear from actually saying something like, like Chromia, Chromia against or Tasma, Tasma against Diablo against twice, Varian, Sony, and Jimmy. Gaslo. And that brings us to the present. A good question would be, what will happen to Heroes of the Storm? Well, no one really knows. But if Diablo 3 could stay alive all this time, then there's probably nothing to worry about. Either way, thank you so much for making it to the end. And if you skip to the end, um, thank you too.